Hello and welcome to Hope Collective Church. My name is Vern and my pronouns are he and him. And this is Less Than Three, a three minute or less video highlighting different ways we're living out the words, you are loved. Here's what's coming up here at Hope Collective. Kids Collective's theme for this month is On the Case. Children will dive into action as detectives in order to investigate parables focusing on four core areas, love, caring, serving, and growing. Additional adults are needed every Sunday for safe sanctuaries. Contact Shante to sign up. Also, next Sunday on August 28th, we'll be back to school Sunday, where we will be having a blessing over the children along with other fun. We are continuing to collect food and personal hygiene items for House of Bread until next Sunday, August 28th. House of Bread is a nonprofit that serves lunchtime meals every day of the year in their dining rooms at 9 4th Avenue. We want to thank you all for your outpouring of donations for the House of Bread. For more information, contact Terry Garetta at T E R I N O T E at AOL.com. Donations will be accepted in the lobby at the Neon. On September 4th, we will have worship in the Oregon District at 1015 only. Grab a lawn chair and a friend and come meet us under the Oregon District Arch on 5th Street. We hope to see you there. And that's what's happening here at Hope Collective Church. Good morning, friends. It's time for church. I'm Steve Stanford, and my pronouns are he and him. And I'm Becky Stanford, and my pronouns are she and her. Welcome to Hope Collective Church. If this is your first time, thanks for being here. We want this service to be a gift to you going into this week. Here at Hope Collective Church, our mission is to develop inclusive communities where people discover sacred worth and calling. And our four core values are empathy. We see people as people, not as objects not as obstacles, but as people, just like we are. Inclusion. We invite everyone to fully participate in our ministries, regardless of the false walls that tend to separate us, including sexual orientation, ethnicity, gender identity, economics, politics, or race. Trust. We are who we say we are. Over time, you'll see that that's true. If your trust has been broken by a faith community before, we understand. It's okay not to be okay and humility. We are confident in our calling, but we acknowledge that there are other churches in the community and we are just one amongst the many. If you haven't already, give a thumbs up or say hello in the comments so we know you are with us today. We invite everyone to visit our website, hopecollectivechurch.org, where you can register your attendance, leave a prayer request, and make a financial contribution. Thank you so much for your continued support. As we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, let's pray this prayer of grounding together. The world will be on the screen. God, our Holy Parent, there are moments we feel as though we are separated from you, times where we have chosen our own agendas over you. As we gather to worship today, remind us that despite our wandering souls, you are still home to us. Thank you, nurturing God, for welcoming us into this space today. Amen. Now, now let's, let's worship, worship together, together friends. friends. Off to church. I'm sure many of you know the words, so please feel free to sing along. Let the Lord hear you. Sing it with your heart. It doesn't matter how it sounds. He doesn't care. He loves it. He loves the sound of his name and praise. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. And you have been so, so good to me. Yes, you have. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. Thank you, Jesus. And you have been so, so kind to me
And I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. Yes, you did. And you have been so, so good to me. Yes, you have. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. God, oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless. coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me no no there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me no 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 there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No, 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 no. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No, there's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear. Michelle Aker. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm married to Vern Witt um, and my daughters Noelle and Madeline attend with us most of the time. Uh, my parents Keith and Deb Aker also attend uh, and my aunts Trudy Aker and Mary Jo Parman also attend often as well. Um, so you may see a big group of us together. Um, and the more the merrier. So we like to give hugs and we will share them. Thanks for giving me uh, the opportunities to share some God moments with you today. Um, I'm not going to lie. It's really hard for me to talk into this little camera here. So I apologize ahead of time 
um, for any weirdness that you encounter in my behavior on this video. I have some notes to look at here, so um, bear with me. Okay, so the first God moment I would like to share with you started when I was around 22 and 23 years old. I was in podiatry school in Chicago at the time, um, and I'd come from a period of time where I was going to church prior to this, and I had some unpleasant experiences at the church with messages of intolerance that didn't sit well with me. Um, so I'd kind of lost my taste for church prior to going to, to Chicago for school. Well, in school, the, the mantra was work hard, play hard. And I did both of those things very well. I knew that the lifestyle I was living there was not congruent with, uh, church lifestyle. So I did not seek out a church while I was living there. Um, I was very lonely because I had gone through a breakup with my fiance at the time. So this can this led me to um, play hard even more in the work hard, play hard mantra. Um, and it was kind of just a spiral of loneliness and um, unhealthy environments. One night <laughs> during this time, um, and this this is where things get weird, so bear with me. Um, one night I was asleep in my bed and I woke up to a figure standing over me, a dark male presence, uh, wearing a long robe hood over the head and a long knife in the left hand, just standing over my bed. This was not a dream. I woke up from the dream to this presence in my room. Um, it scared me half to death. <laughs> Um, I pulled my covers over my head and just thought, oh gosh, what am I going to do? What is this? Pulled down the covers, looked, and the figure is still there. Just menacing, um, evil kind of presence. Um, so I remembered something that my mom told me when I was around 10, which was that if I was ever afraid at night, um, to read my Bible until I was no longer afraid and, co and could go back to sleep. In hindsight, as a parent, I realized she probably told me this to keep me out of her room when I was afraid, but it really worked well in this instant instance. So um, what I did was I jumped out of bed. I ran and flipped on the light, grabbed my Bible off the floor as I jumped back into bed and just flipped open anywhere and started reading. And I wish I could tell you the passage um, that I opened to at the time, but I don't, I don't remember. I just kept reading for over an hour um, until I no longer felt the presence there, um, until I was calm enough that I could go back to sleep. So um, the next night, the same thing happened. Um, I told my friend, my friend who was in school with me, Crystal, um, about it at the time. And, um, she was surprisingly not judgmental <laughs> about my ghost story. And I would spend the night at her house when I could, because I was so scared of this, um, spirit in total, I would say it happened three or four times. And each time it happened, I would get out my Bible um, and read it until I was no longer afraid. And by the last time I had less fear with, with the whole experience overall, but what this experience did for me was it, it set in motion, um, activities of reading the Bible and, um, uh, being in constant prayer. Um, it set those, those motions back into my life. It reset me, it restarted me, um, and, and I developed a relationship with God again. So I guess my point is I had to get so dense, uh, <laughs> um, that God had to like almost literally hit me over the head with a baseball bat to get my attention again. Uh, but it worked. So, um, my point more to this, to this God moment, um, or moments in my life, because it wasn't just one night, it wasn't just one moment. It was setting up a pattern of behavior. So those moments, 
um, they, they brought me back to where I needed to be in my relationship with God. And then that set me up for becoming more of the complete person that I needed to be, um, in order to meet, um, in order to meet my spouse who was going to be waiting for me that I didn't know yet. Okay. So, um, as time goes on, I become a doctor and, um, I'm married and I have a family. Um, I'm very reliant on logic and science in my life. I still have a close relationship with God, but not, I don't talk to him as much, him or her as much as I'd like, because, um, because I'm, well, there's so many excuses because I'm a busy mom, because I'm a busy doctor, um, because we don't need God, because we have science and we, um, we have everything we need, really. We have food on our table. Um, we have our health, we have our family and we have friends. And sometimes in these moments, we become forgetful. Um, we for become forgetful, um, and negligent of our relationship with the creator. So um, another God moment that stands out happened in January in 2020 when I got very sick out of the blue. Um, I got numbness and tingling going up my legs and was unable to walk after a few hours time. Um, I had difficulty talking. I had difficulty swallowing. Um, severe headache. Um, long story short, I landed in the hospital. No one could find out what, figure out what was wrong with me. Um, over the period of a few months, I still did not have answers, but I improved with some medications and speech therapy and physical therapy. And let me insert to say, God bless all therapists and the work that they do. Um, but, um, looking back, we now think that it was probably COVID that then caused me to get an autoimmune disease. But during this time, I was very scared. I was scared that, um, that I might not be there, might, might not be here in a month or two months. Um, and like all mothers probably in this situation, the only thing I could think about was my children. And I would just pray pray, pray, pray. One more day, God, one more day, more time. Um, and, and my prayers were answered one day at a time. And I'm, I'm so thankful for that. Um, and again, the lesson in, in this story is that, um, we need to lean on God all the time. Um, we need to not rely on our own, um, our own abilities. Um, we need to not take for granted the blessings that are present in our life every day. Um, so now I have a greater appreciation for every day in life. Um, I have lots of older patients who, who said that to me for a long time, like it's a good day because I'm here. And now I understand what they're saying firsthand. Um, so th those are my, um, God moments that I've chosen to share with you today. Um, there's many others that if you get to know me, um, I'll, I'll probably mention at some point in time. Um, prayer is a, is a very important part of my life. Sometimes I get that little tingle up my spine um, when I'm praying for someone and I, I just know that the prayer has been heard. Um, so I'd like to take a moment to pray for all of you. Dear Lord, please bless this congregation at Hope Collective Church. We thank you for all these beautiful human beings who are gathered here and for the beautiful human beings online. We thank you for John and Elizabeth. We pray that you continue to speak into them as leaders for our church. We pray that you bless their marriage now and for years and years and years to come. We thank you for all the talent in this church. We 
We thank you for the singers, the musicians, those that help with the children, those that volunteer uh, with the computers and the sound, with the events that are put on. We thank you for this welcoming committee, co this welcoming community, this place of sincerity where we can gather as imperfect humans who will lift each other up and feed grace into one another's lives. A place where we can experience relationships with like-minded and sometimes not like-minded people, but find the God moments in those interactions regardless. We pray that you continue to use the church and the individuals in their daily lives who attend Hope Collective. We pray that you continue to, to use us to help heal, heal this world in whatever way that we can. We thank you for our blessings. We thank you for each day that we have an opportunity to praise you and to lift one another up. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you. Good morning, friends. My name is Gail Webb and my pronouns are she and her. And we are continuing our series on asking for a friend. And the question I have this morning for us is how do I respond to the hate with grace when the hurt is consuming? There's an ongoing theme to me that there, these questions have questions within them. For example, like for this question we have today, the question, one of the questions that comes to mind for me is what is grace? And grace is God's free and unmerited favor for sinful humanity. We all need God's grace. Through his grace, we are saved. And the second question that I see is, what is hate? And hate is intense or passionate dislike. It can be so strong that it can take over your thoughts and being. To regard with active hostility, to have a strong aversion to something or someone. Luke 21, 17 through 19 tells us, everyone will hate you because of me, yet not a hair of your head will be harmed. Be patient endurance, you'll save your lives. Now, I came across a quote that kind of reflects a little bit on this for us, and it's by Dita Von Teese. It is, you can be the ripest, juiciest peach in the world, and there's still going to be someone that hates peaches. And it's a fact of life. There is always gonna be someone that's gonna dislike for whatever reason or another, and even hate. Now, I define these words to give us a better understanding of what these words mean and how we can respond to them. We're going to read 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. And God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather boast about my weaknesses, that the power of Christ may dwell in me. So I am content with weakness, with mistreatment, with distress, with persecutions to difficulties for the sake of Christ. When I am powerless, it is then I am strong. Now Christ gives us power. He has perfected that power. How does that relate to our question of how do I respond to hate with grace when the hurt is consuming? Well, we have the power through God's grace to show the other person who hates us love. It goes along with our theme, you are loved. We can deal with the other person's hate through grace. But we have to look at what is causing the hurt and we need to let the hurt go. We need to forgive ourselves that the other person hates us. We forget that the other person has chosen to hate us. We feel we have done something to cause it when in reality, that person has decided to hate for whatever reason. Now there's a couple of good examples that come to mind showing grace in the Bible. And one is Joseph and his brothers. Joseph was shown favoritism by his father, Israel. 
And Joseph was one of his father's favorite kids, you know, if not the favorite. His dad gave him a many colored coat. He dreamed dreams about his brothers and then his parents and brothers bowing to him. They were already jealous and they got very angry when they heard about the dreams. So angry that they decided to throw him down a well. They actually wanted to kill him, but Reuben stepped in and said, no, we're not going to kill him. And at the last minute, they decided, okay, we won't kill him. But while they were waiting and deciding, there came a caravan. And Joseph brothers sold him into slavery, and he was taken to Egypt. There he stayed firm in his faith. Though he was a slave, he worked hard and stayed honest and stood up to temptation. He was promoted and became the second in command of Egypt. There he was shown God by God that famine was coming, and he put a program in place to so store massive amounts of food. When the famine was really bad, Joseph's brothers came to Egypt because they heard there was food. And there's a lot more to the story, but the short version is that his brothers confessed what they had done, and Joseph, who had been so glad to see them, he cried, and he revealed himself to them and welcomed them. He experienced hatred that took everything from him and responded by showing love and welcoming them. Now, the second example that we have is that Jesus and the Sadducees and the Pharisees. The Sadducees and Pharisees were angry and hated Jesus because Jesus was upsetting the apple cart, so to speak. Jesus was humble and all about love. Where the Sadducees and Pharisees were about prestige, upholding the law and power. Now, Jesus' teachings were going against what the Sadducees and Pharisees were teaching and what they were talking about. And thus, they hated Jesus so much that they wanted to crucify him. Now, Jesus was hung on a cross and in a lot of pain, yet he still showed grace when he said, Abba, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. And that's Luke 23, 34. Now, one thing, though, we... When you have someone hating you, the best thing is don't hate them back. It's easy to throw their words back at them. It's easy to respond with anger, but nothing comes from that, but even more hurt feelings. And in the long run, you're hurting yourself. And 1 Peter 3, 9 says, never return evil for evil or insult for insult, but give a blessing instead. We don't wanna try and figure out why the other person hates you. We already know that they do, but it's not up to us to figure that out. We need to be more understanding. And Psalm 38, 19 kind of gives us a, I have many mortal enemies, and those who hate me without reason are numerous. So as you can see, it doesn't matter. They're going to have their reasons for hating you. Like, I had an incident, and I've been in a sense in the midst of this question because I had somebody that hated me big time and at the time I didn't realize how deep that hate and that hostility was towards me I didn't even realize how jealousy also entered into this and what happened was this person who I thought was a dear friend was very very jealous and hated me because of my marriage to Addie and the faith that I have, and that God hold holds us in his hand. Now, at the time this happened, we were on my active duty status in the military, and Addison was actually deployed. And we were always in communication. We were sending emails back and forth. We were doing the FaceTime on Yahoo Messenger. Yes, I'm dating ourselves here. But it kept us in contact, and it kept us a part of each other's daily life. And this person that was showing these feelings towards me, this hate and anger, well, we found I found out that she had a burden herself, that she was very jealous because of the communication and because the way Addison and I were able to talk to each other, and we still are, but she was wanting a relationship like that with her husband and things weren't going that way 
So instead of trying to figure out how she could do that, she just decided that it was easier to hate me. And it's hard when you're on that end of that hate because I was bewildered. I didn't understand where this was coming from. And I was very confused and hurt because I thought we were very good friends. And then another friend actually who was kind of a friend of both of us told me what was going on with her. And I realized that I needed to step back from her and that I needed to take time to pray for her and to forgive her. And when you have someone hating you that much, it is easy to throw their words back at them, but it's not going to, there's nothing good is going to come from that. And first Peter three, nine tells us never return evil for evil or insult for insult, but give a blessing instead. And never try to, I can't say never, but don't try to figure out why that person hates you. It's just going to end up causing you more anxiety or even being more upset. When in reality, what we need to do is just forgive them. And realize that their hate isn't your fault. Just like this friend of mine, it wasn't my fault she was she hated me. She chose to do that. But because of God's grace, I forgave myself for thinking that it was my fault that she hated me. And I also realized that it didn't matter what I did or how hard I tried to talk to her about it. Nothing was going to change. And in some instances, the more I tried to talk to her about it, the worse it got. Ephesians 4, 31 through 32 tells us, get rid of all bitterness, all rage and anger, all harsh words, slander and malice of every kind. In place of these, be kind to one another, compassionate and mutually forgiving. Just as God has forgiven you in Christ, we need to forgive those who have hurt us like that. It's not easy to do, but we can do it through Christ. And we can always do that. You know, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And that is so true. He gives us the power and he gives us the tools that we need to be compassionate, to be loving. And to even ask the Lord to bless that person that hates us. Romans 12.14, bless your persecutors, bless and don't curse them. And also reach out, not reach out so much as pray for them. Lift them up to the Lord and ask him to bless them. And ask him to help them to come to terms and to deal with their hate. The Lord has blessed us so much through just being on the cross and dying for us. And we, as I said earlier... Hope Collective has the theme of you are loved. And that is so true, even within this question, that because of God's love, because of his grace, I'm able to forgive and I'm able to ask the Lord to bless others. And I pray that you are able to do the same and that those who are persecuting you or those who are hating you, that you're able to Ask the Lord to be with them and ask the Lord to help you forgive them. But if you need to step back from them, ask him to give you the strength to do that as well. And we appreciate you this morning and hope that you have something to think about and to chew on, so to speak. <laughs> Thank you. At this time, we're going to go into worship. But before we start, I would like to say a prayer that is dear to my heart. It's it's one from St. Francis of Assisi that I'm sure many of you have heard before. But please say the words along with me. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, 
Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Let's worship. tired from the running my strength is gone from overcoming my lips are silent I don't know what to pray so I'll wait I'll wait for you my eyes have seen your hand deliver my heart remembers you my help and my defender my well runs dry but i've known the taste of rain and so i'll wait i'll wait for you Hey friends, my name is John Morgan. My pronouns are he and him. Uh, we're going to enter into a time of communion today. And uh, you've noticed that I that I wore a stole today uh, that was made specifically uh, for me and for this church. Um, a stole represents uh, my call to ministry, but also uh, it represents the yoke of Christ that, that guides me, that guides our church. Um, and... Uh, the person who made this stole uh, saw our logo and asked if they could put our put our logo and then uh, the words "You are loved" on it as well. And so it's uh, it's quite an honor, and, and I think I'm going to get into the habit of of wearing uh, this and other stoles like this during the the communion time, just to set set, set apart this time as um, a sacred moment. So uh, I'll be reading now the traditional. Uh, hymnal, you know, the Methodist hymnal, uh, the responses to the prayers will be on the screen for you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and 
And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we do take the bread and we break and we give thanks. When supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so we give, take the cup and we do give thanks. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. May, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. That we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you, take and eat. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Holy God, again, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you all the honor and glory, God. Thank you for filling us with your grace, with your love, with your mercy, with your compassion, with your justice, Lord, your righteousness, all that this meal represents, God. And was, as we often pray, will you continue to fill us up to the overflow so that those around us can experience your love as well. We pray again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, we've reached the end of the service. We just want to thank you so much for joining us for service today. My name is Andy. My pronouns are he and him. And I want to remind you that if you are in need of prayer, please don't hesitate to send me an email at ahill at hopecollectivechurch.org. Or you can message me on Facebook. Remember, there are no small prayers, and I am always willing to pray for you. And now, as you go from this place, go taking the light and love of Christ out into all the world so that all may know that they are loved just as you are. Go in peace, friends, and remember above all else these three important words. You are loved. Amen.